This is Math 152, this is pro, uh, Section 1.2, Part 1. And we are going to uh, make some connections between these, these Riemann sums and uh, integrals. So first off, let's think about uh, this sum. So notice that it's some summation from 1 to n, um, right? And partitions, that's how many partitions we have. And then we have some function that defines the shape, whatever it looks like. And then some uh, multiplied by some change in x. Remember that change in x is the base of the uh, of the rectangles that we're approximating that we're approximating the area under. And then we could do left or right hand rectangles. And then each of these would be our f of x sub i all the way up to uh, uh, however far n takes us. That's the number of partitions we have. Um, a couple things I want to remind you of uh, is as we let this n get bigger and bigger, right? Because we're doing it on a certain range from a to b. As we let n get bigger and bigger, these rectangles get smaller and smaller and it gets more accurate. We also know that this change in x is uh, whatever the range is that we're doing it over. It's b minus a, the total distance, divided by n, the number of partitions. And again, as we let that number of partitions get bigger uh, and larger, this gets more and more accurate. And again, we can do it right hand or left hand uh, to do those estimates, that sort of thing. Now, one thing I want to add is that we also said if we let the number of partitions get really big, go to infinity, this should be an exact value. This should give us the exact answer. Now, using these Riemann sums for finding that uh, that area underneath underneath the curve is actually the same as um, as our integrals. So I'm going to claim that uh, this is the integral. This is the integral from a to b of that same function uh, times the change in x. So these two things. As n approaches infinity, this is this. And this xi is really interesting because we know that the change of x is this b minus a over n. This xi, uh, x sub i, notice if we're doing right hand, we're doing left hand or right hand. I'll just say we're doing right hand. It's the first x value. And notice that x1 would be uh, plus the change in x. And x2, x sub 2 would be the change in x two times. And, and so however, whatever, whichever x we're at, whatever i value it is, we've added this change in x i times. So we can write this as um, i times change in x. In other words, this is saying if I'm at the ith x, I started at the zeroth x, and I added the change in x i times. So if I want to be at the fifth one, I start here, and, and I would be 5. And so it's plus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That gets me out to the fifth one, x0. And so this would be x sub 5. Just some nice connections to have. Um, so let's get a little vocabulary around this, this integral. Now this is, is uh, the definite interval. Definite integral. I think I said interval. And uh, it is a number. Once we evaluate this, it gives us a value. It actually has like a, a, a certain, um, certain thing that it's worth. It's definite. It's not, it doesn't have like the plus C in it. So there's a couple of pieces here. Uh, the function itself is called the integrand. A is the lower bound. B is the upper bound. And the D of X, this means with respect to X. Uh, so it tells us what um, our variable of integration is. So this tells us that x is the variable of integration. And you know, if I if I wanted a different variable to be my my variable of integration, I would just use a different variable. I could say, and then I'd say uh, dt with respect to t. F is continuous over the interval a b. It's going to be integratable over that. So let's. Let's take a little look at something like this. If I say I have the limit um, as n goes to infinity 
So if I told you I was going to run this over the interval 5, 10, well, you actually have everything you need to, to write the, the definite integral. Starts at 5, lower bound, gets up to 10, upper bound. The function is x squared and the change in x with respect to x. So those are equivalent statements. So if you can see what the function is, what you're plugging x sub i into, that's going to be the function that's over here as well. They're the same function. Um, so if we have enough information, like we're told all this, it's pretty easy to go from here to here. You just have to kind of recognize uh, what the function what the function is. I want you to notice that what we're doing is we're just making connections between um, the Riemann sum as the limit as the limit goes to infinity and the definite integral, how they uh, one becomes the other. Um, let me give another example up here. All right, so there is a, a, a sum, and I'm telling you the interval. In future lecture, I'm not going to tell you the integral. I'll tell you how we can find it uh, without, without it giving, being given to us. But for now, we'll say it's given to us. We're good. And let's just write uh, the equivalent definite integral for that. Uh, so the lower bound is 1, upper bound is 3. And notice that if x sub i is my input, here it is being cubed, 2 times it being cubed and 5 divided by it. So my function should be 2x cubed plus 5 over x, and then that's being integrated with respect to x. Write it. Now, I'm not asking you to, to evaluate them at this point. Um, I'm telling you that when we do evaluate it, this will become a, a definite number, a certain value. Um, I would like to just show, your homework isn't going to involve this, but I would like to... Uh, to show a little bit of calculation here, just to make us think about the uh, notation and think about the connections. So again, homework won't be like this. We'll build on these ideas later on, but I wanna give you a preview for it right now. So again, these are connections. We'll build on these ideas later. Don't worry too terribly about uh, getting, getting notes on this or anything like this. I'm gonna have a function, x squared, and I'm gonna run it over the interval uh, two to five. And I want to find the area under it um, in that. So basically, I'm running from 2 to 5. And if this is the x-axis right here, uh, I want to find this area that's under here. So if I talk about what the integral of that would be, it would be the lower bounds 2, the upper bounds 5. The function is x squared. That's what gave me this curve. And I want to differentiate it with respect to x. Okay, so... What I'm going to do, since um, you, you have some previous knowledge, uh, but I'm going to say that we don't, and I'm just going to turn this into a sum and then try and manipulate that sum. Again, enjoy the ride. Don't worry about uh, having this down. So if I was doing this as a sum, right, um, notice my x sub 0 is this. My change in x, remember, is b minus a over n over the number of notation, um, partitions. So five over two minus n, so three over n. That's how wide my partitions would be, right? If I'm only gonna, if I'm gonna have six partitions, this would be a half. I am gonna let that go to infinity. So we'll, we'll get to that. So notice my function is uh, x squared. So what I want is, I wanna be able to write this, xi squared and change in x. And, but I'm going to write them in a way that they take into account this 2 to 5. So I know that my change in x is 3 over n. So that's, okay, that's, that's 3 over n. I know that my xi, and I'll do this from a right-hand approximation. So I'll start with the, the first x. So I'm going to think about it this way. So notice x sub 0 is uh, 2 x sub 1 is 2 plus my change in x. So x, x i is your first x, x sub 0, uh, plus, we said this before, i times change in x. Because if you're at the second one, you've added this change in x twice. If you're at the fifth one, you've added this change in x five times. So in this case, x sub 0 is 2 plus 
and my change in x is 3 over n, and that's going to get multiplied by i. So I'm just going to write this as i times 3 over n. You know, I could also write that as. So let me substitute these values in to here. So I want the limit as n goes to infinity, i equals 1 to n, of my, my x sub i squared. So x sub i is this. So it's going to be 2 plus 3i over n squared times my change in x. And I know my change in x is 3 over n. I'm actually going to dive into this and see if I can evaluate it. So first thing I'm going to do is square this 2 plus 3i over n. So when I square something, that means it times itself. So 2 times 2 is 4. 3i three, three over n times 2 is 6i over n. And notice I've got two of those. So that would be 12i over n. And then 3i over n times 3i over n. 3i times 3i is 9i squared. n times n is n squared. And notice that whole thing is, is times that 3, 3 over n. Again, this is just my function squared, my x sub i squared. And this is my change in x. And so now I'm going to distribute this into here. So I'm still taking the limit as n goes to infinity. This will be, uh, and think of this 4 as a 4 over 1. So 4 over 1 times 3 over n. Uh, 12i times 3 is 36i. n times n is n squared. Uh, 9i squared times 3, 27i squared. n squared times n is n cubed. And so notice I don't have that change in x out here because I've distributed it into here. Now, one of the things I know about summations is if I'm adding, I can break them apart into pieces. So I'm going to write this as three pieces. I'm going to hold on to this limit as n uh, approaches infinity. I'm just going to remember that I'm doing that for the whole thing, just so I don't have to write it over and over and over. So it's the first one plus the second one plus the third one. Okay, so I have three summations to do. Still a little bit of a bear, but um, one of the things that I also know is that I can take constants out of it. Like, I'm only summing this for i, so I just need to keep i's in here. So I could think of this as um, this 12 over n, whatever n is, is just like that's just a constant. So I'm going to think of this as uh, still going to end up doing this. I'll get there of 1. I just factored out a 12 over n. Here I could take out a 36 over n squared. Here I could take out a 27 over n cubed. I missed that cube. And so now notice if I try to let the limit go to infinity right now, I've got all these divide by big numbers. Like the whole thing's kind of a mess. So I'm going to go a little bit further. And this goes back to when we first started talking about sigma notation. Um, if you sum up all the, if you just sum up one n times, one plus one plus one plus one, it's going to be n. So this is 12 over n times n plus 36 over n squared. Uh, the sum uh, from i to n of i, either know it or you can look it up. It's uh, n times n plus one over two plus this sum for square. The squaring sum is. Uh, n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 over 6. Again, you can look that up back in chapter, I think it's 1.1. And I'm still going to take the limit as n goes to infinity. But all those summations are done. So now let me clean this up a little bit. Uh, limit as n goes to infinity. n divided by n is 12. So that's just a 12. Okay, that's cool. Um, let's see this one. n times n plus 1. That's n squared plus n. And notice these are divided by 2. So I could think of this as divided by 2, divided by 2. And that 36 over n squared is times these. So this is plus the n squareds cancel. 36 divided by uh, 2 is 18. Plus the n cancels out one of these n's in the bottom. 36 divided by 2 is 18. Plus, if I multiply this one out, uh, I distribute that into there, n squared plus 1. Then I'd like foil it out or whatever. 
but that multiplies out to uh, 2n cubed plus 2n squared plus n over 6. And that means each of those pieces are over 6. And so if I distribute this into here, uh, n cubes cancel out. So this is uh, whatever 27 times 2 divided by 6 is, plus this next term, 27 times 3 over 6. But there's an n squared here and an n cubed here, so n, plus, and then if I take it to this last one, um, 27n over 6n cubed. And now remember, I'm, I'm taking the limit as this thing goes to infinity. So as n goes to infinity, this becomes 18 over really big. This goes to zero. This becomes something, that n gets really big, like over a billion, over a million. This goes to zero. n uh, cubed, and this actually should be zero. That also will go to zero. So those terms all go to zero. So as n goes to infinity, 12 is, stays 12. Like there's no n there. It doesn't affect these. So this got 12 plus 18 plus, uh, let's see, that goes into that three times. That goes into that nine times. So plus 9, and that is 39. So what I just did was I used these sums to figure out that integral. In other words, the area underneath this curve is 39 square units. Okay. So that is a big idea that we can take this, write it this way, and use these to manipulate it. There's more efficient ways to calculate this, which I think that you, you know, but I wanna show the connection that this is a deep, rich connection. Um, for the assignments, really what I'm gonna ask you to do today is just look back to these type of problems. If I give you something that looks like this, you should be able to write it as like that. And then the next couple of units, we will keep working to uh, deepen these connections. All right, send me any questions that you have.